Welcome to Mind Fitness Warriors. We are a channel that is interviewing those all around the world who have gone through the deepest valleys of mental health and risen out the other side, who are here to share their raw and real stories with us of their journey as well as their recovery. So today I am really excited to welcome on our guest speaker. So we have Jennifer Allen. She's a Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Really excited to have Jennifer here with us. She's focuses on the LGBT community and the youth, and she's actually just got her, um, just graduated with her, with her mental health counselor certification. Really excited to see all the amazing things you're going to do in the future, and really happy that you have joined us here, that you are here to share uh, your story and your journey with us, all about what you've gone through and some of the struggles you've gone through with mental health and where you are today. So without further ado, I pass the torch to you and we're here to hear your story. Thank you so much, Jennifer. I'm really excited to be here. I'm glad you've reached out and um, this is really great to be able to share my story and uh, spread more awareness, certainly. So thank you. <laughs> um, I guess starting from the beginning is always kind of the best place. So uh, growing up, you know, I had a really great childhood, really um, great parents. I have one younger brother who I'm very close with. And um, I think that gave me like a great foundation. I'm from a very small little country town. Um, we had like a Walmart and a couple red lights and just like really nothing going on as far as activities. Like we had a movie theater, um, but where we really, um, I guess did well is we had our like groups, like our tribe. Like I had all my friends and still my best friend. I've known her since I was in kindergarten. So it's, I guess, really great to grow up in that environment. Um, where I guess I started to, um, things started to shift was later in my high school career. Um, and then that whole transition into college. Um, and as far as mental health goes, like I, I grew up with a family that didn't really believe in it. Um, you know, they had their own things going on. So a lot of times, I guess when people, um, sometimes are suffering for the things, I guess admitting it and acknowledging it is still a big step. And a lot of my family hadn't been at that point. So they, um, basically just had the mindset that, you know, depression isn't real, anxiety isn't real, people that go to therapy are weak, and just these really negative views of it, and I had always had a great interest in it, like, I always thought psychology was fascinating, I, I would love to understand different um, people and their minds, so um, when I actually left home and went to college was my first actual experience with um, any kind of mental health programs, and I knew I was, something was going on with me, um, I was having nightmares, and um, I just didn't feel myself and, um, I would kind of, I guess my mood wasn't great. I was sometimes felt really depressed. So I went to the, um, therapist at my school cause they offered it and it was part of, you know, the program. So I was like, you know, why not? I'll try it out. So my very first experience with this, I remember walking in and I had to sit on a computer and fill out all this questionnaire about different questions of, um, have I ever thought of killing myself? Do I, you know, just all these different things and I it didn't feel really I was just like I don't know weird it was like I was doing a homework assignment I guess and then I was able to meet with somebody I guess the following week and they diagnosed me with PTSD um, post-traumatic stress disorder and she immediately wanted to throw me on medication and I was always kind of weary about that my mom was always very natural and she liked holistic methods and I remember her using like just different fruits and vegetables and herbs. And that was always kind of her thing. She always kind of pushed more natural. Like she didn't feed us pills too much. And um, like as far as like Tylenol is when we were young, young, for the most part, she liked doing everything very natural. Um, so whenever the doctor immediately threw that at me, it scared me because in addition to that, um, my best friend, her roommate was seeking treatment and had been hospitalized. They had, I forget the medication they put her on, but so it like kind of that was my experience in that moment. So I was very scared. So I, I didn't go back to that therapist for at, at all during that career. I eventually switched schools. I played volleyball. So that kind of kept me active. And it wasn't until after I graduated um, when I sought treatment again. So this time um, my parents had divorced um, and I found out the night before I was supposed to graduate my undergrad. And um, so that was a big shock to me kind of grew up like like I said I had a very stable childhood it was like uh, I don't know my friends were really hurt by it too because we grew up our home was like the place where all the kids came and my mom always cooked for us and we had like 
after school swim parties and it was just kind of like the crib I guess that's where everybody came um so it kind of I guess opened more wounds for me and so then I sought treatment again and this time um I met um it was more like talk therapy we actually um talked she asked me what was wrong and that was I was also going back to school so I was able to do it through the school program so I was really grateful that was offered so I did that for like a year and it it helped. It kind of got me focused. Um, but when I graduated, I wanted to seek more kind of, um, I guess, holistic type modalities. And um, one of my friends was into this thing called body talk. And I had never heard of that before and didn't understand it. But how she explained it to me was basically, it's getting your mind and your body back connected. And um, so I experienced that with her. Um, she took me to where she goes and I was hooked. I'm like, oh, this is so interesting. And so when I got back home, um, I tried to find somebody local and it was hard at the time. Um, and another, um, one of my mentors, um, he offered me during that time, he knew I liked to travel and really didn't have the means at that time. Um, but he thought this might be a great way to kind of boost my mood and help me along my journey. And I'm really grateful for this he sponsored me to go to Haiti in um, 2011 on a mission trip um, and doing that really just I felt busted me wide open like my heart like I was able to empathize so much deeper and um, it was just it kind of really shattered my whole world of my perception I guess and what I knew, knew of the world so when I got home from doing that I was just on fire I wanted to volunteer I wanted to do something positive and so I went online and I started um, applying for um, like boys and girls club like all these different types of things and the callback I got from was from the mental health association of Broward um, and so I feel like mental health has always had like some kind of influence so during this time I volunteered with the program it was called listen to children so what I did I'd go into elementary schools and I'd speak one-on-one -on -one with the you know with anywhere from kindergarten to fifth grade and um, usually they had behavioral problems and the teachers wanted to, I felt like pawn them off. But once you got them one-on-one, -on -one, they're like, it was amazing. It was, I felt like I learned a lot from it. Just being with the kid and being able, if they didn't want to talk, we just color or play. And that's also another way I think children express a lot of their emotions. So we'd get to doing uh, something and um, they would, something would come out. So I'd get little pieces here and there, like watching them play um, and playing with them. And, I, and the teachers would talk to me and say how their grades have improved, their attendance is up, and their like, and behavior is doing better. So I felt like this is something that I may be good at and I really enjoy and it makes me happy. And I did that for five years and I you know, have my day job. I'm like, why am I spending so much time working in a job that doesn't make me happy? Um, and you know, I'm volunteer for these opportunities that you know, I could do professionally and be happy all the time. <laughs> so. Um, that kind of clicked in me, like maybe I should continue to go further. And that's why I decided to go to school. Um, I um, applied and to Nova Southeastern and I was able to, to graduate just recently and um, really, I guess, deepening my knowledge of the mind and trying to understand it further. Because um, prior I was doing life coaching and I really enjoyed that. I think it's fantastic. Um, I just kept hitting like a brick wall um, with people. And I, I, that's where the mental health, I think, aspect comes in for me. And um, one other point I wanted to add about that. Oh, um, with the life coaching, I always felt the need to, um, I guess, put on like a face, like um, everything is positive. Everything's always rainbows. Everything's just, you know, wonderful. And it, it really, um, it, I didn't feel authentic after a while. Like, yes, I was a happy person, but not all the time. And so it just got very numbing that I wasn't able to express, you know, those dark, you know, I guess negative aspects of me. Um, Cause I find when you hold them in and you suppress, it creates all kinds of communication difficulties and health, you know, problems. Um, so learning to express those became a big part of my um, recovery and understanding of the world and getting involved in mental health. Um, so yeah, that's a lot of what my focus on is express being balanced, I guess, expressing the positive and the negative and feeling both honoring both and understanding 
the ebbs and flows of life and um, how to experience those emotions healthy <laughs> in a healthy way. So what, take us back to some of those moments where you felt, you know, you had mentioned that mental health has been, it's followed you through your whole life. It's been right. part of your whole life. You've had, you know, those experiences, um, you know, th through whatever, you know, you may have gone through you, you've had those experiences and it, it kind of always followed you. It kind of always, you know, whether yeah. opportunities opened up and these doors opened up for you, um, or whether you went through something or you went through an experience that led back to, you know, your own space with your mental wellness and your emotional wellness. So right. what were some of those key defining moments and what were you feeling at those times? Um, you know, take us through kind of like what that looked like and felt like for you. And okay. um, you, you kind of mentioned that you, you would go to a therapist and you would try to do the talk therapy aspects of it. So how did you get yourself to this place? Were there any certain, um, you know, certain recovery processes or was there anything that really stood out to you that said, you know, with all the times that I've gone through in my life, with all the different experiences that I've had, these were some of the key, these were some of the key nuggets that I used in my toolbox that I, so that when I know something was coming up, this is what I would gravitate towards because it seems as though you've had this, you know, beautiful process that you've gone through and, you know, you now can see it from a different perspective. So how did you get there? One big one for me is um, relying on my tribe and going to the, my people and my friends and my loved ones when something's wrong because I mean everybody has different personality types mine I tend to put everything on my shoulders and try to do everything by myself and not tell anybody how I'm feeling until it's just like oh my god like you know? so it's good to along the way express those because it one it gives them the opportunity to be empathetic and to reconnect with you like it's any I think most of the great connections with my bestest friends have been those hard moments where we've had to share some painful experiences. And I think that is a big foundation of a lot of relationships. And when you avoid that, um, you know, not so glamorous part of yourself, it's denying a part of yourself and it's not allowing you and that other person to connect. Um, Cause like for instance, when you're upset and your partner or your friend asks you, you know, what's, what's wrong? And you're like, no, I'm fine. So your body obviously is communicating to them something's not right. They're feeling that energy, whatever it is, and you tell them that's fine. So that's then having them question their ability to read you. And so now the days go past and they're reading wrong cues. They think maybe you're mad at them. Like it just creates this ball of um, confusion and uh, you're blocking off the communication with that person. And so one of the ways that I really learned that my, in my personal life. So um, I can't, when I came out to my best friends, um, so I'm, um, I guess bi, gay, however you, um, and telling that to my best friends was the scariest things ever. I was so terrified that they were just going to judge me. And um, I knew they wouldn't cause I, you know, been friends with them so long. Like part of me like, no, they're still going to love you. But there was also that part of me. It's like, it could change everything. It's going to, you know, just destroy your, so I finally did it to, when I finally did it one by one to each of them, they're like, one knew, <laughs> one was mad that I didn't tell her sooner. She's like, are you ridiculous? She's like, how many people know before me? Like, uh, and they were like, it didn't give them the opportunity to feel that empathy and to go through that process with me and to, it like and it I noticed it shut off our communication we talk less because I was scared something would come up they'd ask like who was that girl you were with or you know whatever it is like it shuts down and starts to break apart the friendship or relationship or whatever you know that partnership is so I, that was kind of a long answer but I guess being open and communicating your feelings to your people and your loved ones is a critical, critical element. And whether it's physically or whether it's online, and that's, I think, one great benefit of the technology we have today is, you know, I'm talking to you in another country, like, it's just, it's great, you know? So um, we have the capabilities to really reach out and connect with people, but I think by just showing our highlight reel, you know, <laughs> it doesn't really um, express that authenticity and it doesn't allow us to really connect on an authentic actual level. Absolutely. And do you feel that maybe there was, um, you know, with, 
you know, we use that term, you know, in the closet, quote unquote. And I use that term actually when I talk about, I'm, I'm currently writing a book right now um, on my fitness mastery. And, and one of the chapters is actually let the skeletons out of the closet. And for a lot of people with mental health, that's one of the big pieces because we can hide this. With all the things that I came up with, oh my gosh, I had an arsenal of things in my toolbox. I'd be like, oh, I have food poisoning. Oh, I have this. Oh, I have that. What card am I throwing at the situation this time to get out of it? Because I yes. can't tell anyone what the heck I was going through. Um, like my boyfriend thought I was bulimic for the longest time because I kept being like, you have to pull over, I'm gonna throw up because I didn't want to actually admit that I was having a panic attack, which was shutting down my digestive system. And really I had to go to the bathroom, but I didn't want to talk about that. And right. so, you know, there's so many different ways that we stay and we hide in, you know, in who we are and what we're experiencing. So do you feel that there was a connection between you not even coming out just about your sexuality um, was there a connection with the mental health piece at that time? And did you feel relief once you finally came out? You're like, this is who I am. Oh, so yeah. I'm owning all of this now. <laughs> you feel the connection there? Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. I mean, it was a little rough patch because not everybody took it so well, but that's just part of the process. But as far as like getting, it's like, yes, like this is who I am. Exactly how you said, like, <laughs> And I was, I felt my confidence up because I didn't have anything to hide anymore. I didn't have this huge weight that I was trying to conceal and um, just, you know, the white lies, even if you're really leaving out the truth that I got really good at, I guess. So just being able to be raw and authentic and yeah, this is me and yeah, this is Barbara or whatever, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> whatever. it's just very liberating and absolutely, it definitely um, help lift my mood and help, I think, get me out of some funk. You know, it, it certainly, certainly helped just opening up and expressing it and being true. Absolutely. And I think that's such a big piece of it, right? Is that we're so scared to admit who we are, but we were gifted with, you know, this, this, this true authentic self. And this is what so many people are talking about now where we're talking about be you, be your authentic self. Yet on the flip side, society is pushing the same message as do whatever you want, be who you are, except not that way. Cause that's not right. You know, right. And so it's like this struggle, but I think we're starting to break through that now. I feel like we're starting to break through this. Here's who you're supposed to be. Cause everyone, there's so much resistance against, against that now, you know, yeah trying to speak out against and say no that's not who I'm supposed to be because I'm so fully feeling pulled to be this or this or whoever I am and I think that with all of what we're doing now the more and more we're talking about it the more you know episodes we put out the more YouTube channels or social media or Instagram pages that are focused around you know, um, one of the pages that I follow is mental health is trending. And I love that because yeah. it's actually so true. Right now, we who were shunned for years of like, mm -hmm, you know, I'm not going to yeah. talk about what I'm going through. It's now like, you know what? I have a story to share and it's a damn good story because yeah. it's what I went through and there's no reason to be ashamed of that anymore. And now we're becoming kind of leading the pack for the people who are still suffering in silence because I think that's it's becoming more aware that that's not a thing anymore. We don't have to do that. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So where are you at right now, Jen? Where are you feeling, you know, wh wh what is your path? What kind of messages do you want to leave with our viewers? You know, is there something on your heart that you want to share and that, and, and, and where are you going from here? Well, as far as career wise going, um, you know, I, like I said, I just graduated two weeks ago with my master's in mental health counseling. So I'm really excited to utilize that. Um, I'm, will be applying for jobs in the Fort Lauderdale area as far as to be a therapist. And that's my, my long-term goal is to be able to open my own practice and work with, um, youth, young adults and, um, particularly LGBT youth. Um, so as far as words of wisdom, just don't give up and like, life gets better and sometimes it's bad but that's okay and to embrace that and acknowledge that and don't be scared to talk about it. like when some don't say it's fine I'm fine if you're not fine I guess is my thing like be like you know it's kind of shitty and then your friend can be like okay you know why tell me about it and it just opens up the dialogue it creates better relationships and it's it's when we shut down and don't communicate that kind of the rest of our life, I feel, especially with our relationships, starts to shut down as well. So mm -hmm. don't be scared to talk about it. 
because mm -hmm. it's not like it's never going to be as bad as you think it is it might be bad but it's not going to be just oh because our brain gets so creative with you know worst case scenarios so just talk about it <laughs> Awesome. I love that. Well, I am so appreciative that you've joined me today on my fitness warriors and you truly are a warrior, you know, being able to go through your struggles and your deepest valleys of mental health on your journey and come out the other side and now have an entire career dedicated to helping other people um, along their journeys and specializing in what was very um, important for you and very authentic for you, um, being the LGBT community. So with youth, especially. So I love that. That is, uh, that's amazing. And that's definitely, I can feel the passion behind it for you. So um, thank you so much, Jen, for being here today from four Fort Lauderdale and sunny, sunny skies up there, although it's summer here too, so it's just yeah. not too bad. Um, <laughs> thank, thank you so much for having me. It's been awesome, and we wish you all the best, and we're going to toss up your credits here at the end, so if anyone wants to get in contact with you, um, you follow you on Instagram, you have a really awesome page, and I can feel all the energy behind your, your post just about being who you are, and it is truly inspiring. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Awesome. So for everyone else out there, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Mind Fitness Warriors. And please be sure to subscribe to the page so that you can get notifications every time a new episode drops. Take care and we'll see you next time.